Okay. Sam, sorry to hear about your diagnosis. Um, any, anything you can tell us about how you're feeling and all that? And then I have other stuff. Thank so I want to, I want to ask you about the fact that your numbers, if you look at y'all statistically, your numbers don't speak to a team that should be four and two or three and three. How, how are y'all doing that? You mean we got some bad numbers? Just mediocre statistics. <laughs> yeah, I think we're doing it with takeovers. Yeah, I mean, takeover turnovers. I think we're doing it with turnovers and and uh, you know, opportunistic scoring and opportunistic third, fourth and ones and you know a lot of belief and and a lot of energy out there. But uh, you know, numbers a lot of times accumulate over a over a uh, six game season uh, six game season so far and not necessarily you know game to game so um i'm feeling great you know I, I you know i'm not feeling great i you know i'm embarrassed i wish i wouldn't have got the covid i i'll be honest with you i haven't done anything different than what i've done you know ever since we were on test 33 and and the countdown was down to 12 before the regular season. I got a call this morning at 6.30 and said that I'd tested positive. And so I went up this morning to te retest uh, because I feel, you know, the same as I, I have all year um, and was uh, ready to get going with Florida. We, you know, we'll certainly continue that. That's not, that won't be a problem with our coaching staff, but you know, I'm just disappointed. I mean, you get into coaching to coach and I'm just disappointed. I'm not going to have that opportunity to do that. Assuming uh, the test wasn't incorrect and, and that I don't get three, three negative tests in a row, which I'm hoping I do. Nate. Um, Sam, just kind of in the pecking order, just how much will will Barry Odom do this week as far as head coaching, and and how or does that change any until you're told otherwise? Well, Barry, uh, right now he's you know basically at practice. You know, I have uh, the tone setter for practice, and then uh, during practice I run basically all the timing of practice and certainly uh, oversee every drill and all those things. Barry won't be able to do that because he's got a defense to get ready. Um, like today, we have the good, bad, ugly tape and Kendall will work the good, bad on defense or excuse me, on offense and Barry will do it on defense and Scott will do it on special teams. And when we go to, out to practice, uh, somebody in the Equipment staff will run the timing of practice instead of me and Barry will coach defense. But as far as the um, voice of the team and those things, that'll be Coach Odom. And certainly if I'm not able to go to Florida on Saturday, he'll he'll act as the head coach and he'll do a, a damn fine job, I'm sure. Bob. Sam, I think I read that that when uh, uh, Saban tested positive, initially he was watching vi live video of practice at home and was like on the phone or walkie-talkie or some to a manager and was almost directing practice, I guess, remotely or at least making suggestions. Is that something you you thought about doing? Can you see yourself doing that? Would that be effective? No, I mean. <laughs> No, I can't see myself doing that. I mean, I hire great coaches. They're going to go out there and get the football team ready. Uh, certainly, as far as uh, staff meetings and uh, things that I see on tape, and, you know, I just – I won't be able to see it at practice. But, you know, we tape everything, individual uh, walkthroughs. So the things I see on tape that, you know, maybe we could do a little bit better or maybe we're doing great. Uh, that need to be um, relayed to the staff. Well, I'll certainly be able to do all that. And then the bottom line is we have a coach for every position. We have coordinators for all three phases and they do the coaching. I mean, that's what happens. Uh, and uh, they'll continue to do that. I'm not worried about practice. I'm, you know, Coach Saban maybe had a different uh, way to do it, but I'm not worried about that. I'll talk to them uh, before practice starts uh, over Zoom and, I don't want to make too big a deal out of me. You know, I'm, 
Uh, I've got good coaches. They'll be fine. Scotty. Hey, Coach, I wanted to ask you about Eric Gregory. He was a guy that in the preseason you said you really liked just the way that he played. What what growth have you seen from him since that point? You know, I really thought that he played good, well early. And then I thought he had two or three games in there where I just didn't see that same quick twitch, that same explosion, explosiveness off the football. And then uh, I saw a little bit of it at A&M. And then uh, this game here, you know, they tried to flip the ball out a, a couple of times on him, didn't block him and try to misdirection and flip it to his side. And he ran about down both times, obviously picked a pass, uh, had a really nice game. We need him to. We, I keep forgetting, you know, that he's young uh, because he's such a big, good-looking kid, you know. But uh, he's getting better, um, handling his gap better. He's one of the bigger guys we have on the D-line, so we need him to continue to improve, and he has. Trey Biddy. Hey, Coach, how do, how do you plan to shuffle things around with somebody else moving to a, an assistant coach role that's a GA or something? I don't know, you know, Trey, I, I'm not for sure that uh, we're going to do anything um, today, um, possibly because the, the practice will be uh, very similar to if I was there, you know. Uh, once I get my test results back in the morning, uh, we may add a coach, you know, we've got a couple of, of uh, GAs that we could move up. Uh, I'm not positive where that would help us, to be honest with you, uh, because I don't see uh, the head coaching role for Barry being any change uh, really whatsoever until Saturday. So um, we'll certainly look into that. Uh, I would like to wait and see if I, you know, if I'm negative in the morning uh, and, and go from there. Trey Shat. Hey Coach, what concerns you with Florida? And then it looks like there potentially could be another hurricane that might uh, impact this football game, uh, like the remnants of the one that impacted the, the Auburn game earlier this season. You talking about a hurricane from the University of Florida or like a real hurricane? No, no, a real hurricane. There's two of them. I mean, yeah, they, they, are, they are really good. I understand. I'm, I'm teasing. They're a really good football team. And – you know, we're going to keep track of the hurricane, obviously, and those things. Um, uh, you know, they shift and move a lot, quite a bit, but we'll keep track of that uh, on a regular daily basis. Um, they're, you know, if you look at them offensively, they, they've scored, you know, 41, 41 against Missouri, 44 on Georgia, 51 on Ole Miss, 38 on a and I mean, uh, there's so many weapons offensively. Everybody talks about Trask, and they should because he's outstanding. But then, you know, you look at Tony and Pitts and, and Pierce and Grimes and Copeland. I mean, they got so many guys that, I mean, backs out of the back. They do as good a job as anybody in the country of running their backs out of the backfield and, and throwing the football to them. And I'm not, I'm not talking about just a flare route. I'm talking about – uh, running them deep, running them across the middle, running them outside. They, they're they doing a really good job with protection. I think this is the best uh, I've seen Florida's offensive line look in, in, in quite some time, uh, actually. Uh, they've got an outstanding offensive line coach. On defense, they're getting bigger. I think the key to them is Slayton, the guy on the inside, the nose guard. And, you know, they got the transfer from Georgia, Brenton Cox, who's playing really well. Um, uh, Jeremiah Moon has been there forever, number seven. And, you know, they have – what they have, they got enough big guys on the inside to stop the inside part of the run. They will get after you on third down. I think you're going to have to chip. You're going to have to help on their defensive ends to protect to, to for Felipe to have enough time to throw the ball. And then Ventrell Miller has been there for a long time and can run and hit. I, I think he's um, – to me, he's the best player on that defense. And – and so where they've had, you know, where, where people's trying to tackle them, is, tackle them is in the secondary. And I don't really understand that because you haven't seen a lot of teams make a lot of big plays. Uh, Ole Miss uh, uh, made some nice plays on them. But 
they they're they're a top five team or whatever top six team in the country for a reason. Very very talented, and of course, uh, Coach Mullen is is as good an offensive mind as there is in the game. Otis. Coach Pittman, uh, on the game Saturday night, your, your offensive line continues to play better each game. Did anyone grade out particularly well Saturday night on the offensive line? Uh, Ricky Stromberg would be the highest grade grader on the O-line. Probably the most consistent uh, guy we have up there. Um, he, he, you know, he's probably played as much ball or more than – than the other guys. Ty Clary's playing well. You know, I'm glad we, we he's starting to go in there to guard and and uh, he's playing well. I'm glad Coach Davis saw that early in the year where possibly Ty would help us even more as a guard with Ricky going to center. But those two guys would have graded probably the highest of the group. I was really p- proud of Dalton Wagner too. Man, how can you not like Dalton Wagner? I mean, he's just a hard playing guy. You know, quarterback got hit a time or two, but for him, um, you know, being not not repping a lot during during the season and going in there and and starting and playing well, I was proud of him. Coach, follow up to that, Coach uh, Noah Gatlin. Do you have any update on him and if he's gonna be available this week? Well, not today. Um, maybe we can get him back on Wednesday. Maybe. And uh, we need him, uh, obviously, but I would say Wednesday at the earliest. Jordan. Hey, Coach. So much has been made of Felipe going back to the swamp. I know he tends to keep his emotions at bay, but do you have to say anything different? Have you all talked about that or maybe trying to keep that off limits? No, and Jordan – to be honest with you, that's the most disappointing thing about this darn COVID because I want to go back there with him. And that's that's the most – to this point, this, that's the most disappointing thing. But uh, he'll play well. Um, you know, Felipe knows how confident we are in him. And uh, I think he'll play well. He's, he's got the demeanor – the mentality to handle going back to Florida. He knows he's a valuable part of our offense, but we have other parts. I think he just knows if he goes and does his job well, we'll have an opportunity to move the ball and score some points. But I'm excited for him to go back, and obviously I hope I'm able to go with him. Nikki? Coach, you mentioned Kyle Pitts already, but if if he's not able to go on Saturday, what does that take away from Florida? Um, And then – um, you guys didn't handle Jalen Weidermeyer that well. How can you, how can you, uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> he gave you a little bit of trouble. How can you yeah. uh, fix that this week with this tight end? Well, Pitts is awesome. I mean, he, he's really, really good. But I tell you what, Gamble is really good. And then they had the uh, young guy, uh, uh, um, Dad government, uh, Keon, anyway, number nine. And those guys have three of the best tight ends in the country on the same team. Because I was thinking, well, there's going to be a drop. Well, listen, there is a drop because Pitts is, is incredible, but not much. And so uh, are they going to throw? They have, you know, with Tony and the tight ends and the guys coming out of the backfield, they have so great a skill. And uh, so it's going to be difficult. But I'm sure Coach Odom will figure out a way. We're doing a home Zoom. My wife just walked in. (laughs) That's what that was. Don't walk six feet close to me, though. Sorry. Troy Lynch. Yeah, Coach, uh, really glad to hear that you're not symptomatic right now. I know that we're still waiting to hear back for further results. But uh, if you do test positive and not being able to go out to Florida, how do you plan on approaching this quarantine mentally? Well, you know, I I watch a lot of film. You know, uh, I I believe the first half of my day uh, up till 
the walks normally with Barry. I don't know there'll be a whole lot of change because usually I'm writing notes and watching tape and texting recruits and meeting with the coaches. And then we get to 1130, quarter till noon, and then Barry and I go for a walk. Uh, and then the afternoon part of it where I do a little bit more uh, interaction with the staff, you know, personal interaction and things of that nature, maybe have some kids come up, able to visit with them, things of that nature. That part of it, I'll probably just go back to looking at and reviewing more tape, maybe from practice tonight, tomorrow, or, or maybe uh, just trying to find something that I see, some kind of edge that we can get on offense, defense, or special teams. I'll be able to use that time probably doing that a little bit more. It could get boring, you know, obviously, then you have the time during practice. Because I don't want to Zoom during practice. I mean, I can watch it as soon as it's over, you know what I mean? So that part of it there, it could get kind of boring, you know, I don't know. It's day day five hours so far since I found out, you know, so or six hours. So we'll see, but maybe tomorrow or whenever, next time we get a chance to visit, I'll tell you what I did in the afternoon. I got to find something to do and it'll, it'll all be about ball, I'm sure. All right, let me know if you've got more in the chat. Tom? Yeah, Sam, this question is about Felipe and his maturity level. I think at Florida, the word I heard is that the critics got to him and it, like he responded to some criticism and stuff. What have you seen from him from that part of it, the maturity and the mental makeup? Well, A, Arkansas hadn't treated him that way. I mean, Arkansas hasn't been critical of him, and uh, they shouldn't be. I mean, the guy came in here and has done a great job for us. Um, I don't know if Florida was or not, but I know we haven't been. You know, everything I say to Felipe Franks is positive, everything. Um, even if it's negative, I find a positive way to say it um, because – uh, I believe in him and the team believes in him. And, and if you, yeah, if he feels that, I think he's a better football player. And uh, so that's our approach with him and, and he's deserved that and he's earned that. But um, I think he, honestly, I think he's real proud of the coming here because of the way our fans have treated him. Trey Biddy. Yeah, Coach, just on the, the testing that you plan to do, obviously you hope to get three more negative tests. So you tested today, that would count as one. Do you have to wait any time, or can you test Tuesday with the rest of the team and then Thursday again? And if you're waiting for a result on Friday, is there a chance that you have to schedule, maybe do your own travel <laughs> some kind of way or, or, or what? And uh, good luck. Right, exactly. Friday. I'm sorry. Um, exactly what goes on is we no, – normal testing Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, as you all know. The results get back Monday, Wednesday, Friday, a.m. Well, this morning, I just got out of the shower. It was about 6.30, and I got a call that said that I tested positive. Only guy on the whole team, you know. Yeah, lucky me, you know. But um, – and I wouldn't want it to be somebody else either. Um, so I went back in this morning and I tested. So that result would be back tomorrow morning. If it's negative, then I'll test again Tuesday morning, result Wednesday. If it's negative, I'll test again Wednesday morning, result Thursday morning, and I'll be able to go back to work and be at work Thursday by eight or nine o'clock in the morning. If any of those are positive, then I go back to um, Sunday, Monday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, and then 10 days ahead of that and would be back to work Wednesday, Thursday of LSU week. No matter how I feel or no matter, you know, I'm asymptomatic, so no matter how I feel. Last one, Bob. Sam, I know you mentioned Trask. I think he's got like five straight games of four touchdowns, or maybe it's four straight of five. I don't know. Uh, just what, what, what are you seeing from him specifically that's making him so good? A lot of confidence and a lot of help. I mean, the guy can throw any ball, but he has some outstanding skill players. I mean, they're, they're outstanding. And 
but he's getting rid of the ball. He's getting good protection. Um, and the guys are getting open and he doesn't have to hold the ball long. I mean, he's not holding the football and because obviously he knows where he wants to go. He's got guys that can get open and he's throwing the football on rhythm and it's hard to get to him. Uh, Georgia had a hard time getting to him and Georgia, you know, Georgia's good, really good defense. Played a lot of man coverage. They, if you play man coverage, they're going to pick you apart. But I, I, I understand you have to play man. You have to play zone. You have to play two. You have to play three. I get all that stuff. Two man. But you're going to have to mix it up on him because if they understand what you're doing, it's difficult to stop them. All right. That's going to wrap us up with Coach Pittman. Coach, we love you. We'll see you Thank soon. Thank you, guys. I'm doing fine, everybody. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it.